Why are you so nervous, you are? <laughs> What's got you nervous? My body count. What? Welcome back to Black Man Talks Japanese Cartoons, video number 35. Yeah! Today's topic... No... No... Fuck no. Yeah, let's do that one. The second season of that goofy-ass show that I really like. Guess what, guys? It's, uh... It's, st it's still good. I say right foot creep, oh, walking with that heat. And to the rest of you... To the rest of you... The non-believers, the underachievers, the tweet and deleters. As I was killing myself and making that Jujutsu Kaisen video. By the way, go check that out. I almost sprained my fucking wrist making that. No, I am not joking. In between making that video, I took the time to catch up on some anime that I missed throughout the course of whatever season we're on now. I don't know, way too much anime comes out now. I've been missing a lot. And if you don't know what Spy Family is, then I don't know, bro. Watch my other video then. We don't really got time to wait on you, bro. Everybody else already did their homework, come on now. Spy Family for me is still the Japanese equivalent to the ultimate Saturday morning cartoon anime. Like I deadass get so nostalgic watching this show i can only imagine how it is for kids in japan waking up on a saturday doing all their homework watching spy family and then doing more homework gentlemen i give you the asian this show is very comfy for me i feel like the food critic from ratatouille eating remy's food and being reminded of my childhood that's me that's me every time i watch this goofy ass show bombastic side eye Something is wrong with me. First prize! First prize! First prize! My precious Lloyd is staring so intently at his wife! So it's true! He really has a bad for strong women! Uh, you're. Don't get the wrong idea, Lloyd! I used to be the apprentice of a professional hammer user! Such beautiful eyes! <laughs> I said in my last video that with this show, I don't crave a plot. I don't need a narrative from this offer. If you're looking for an Avatar The Last Airbender cartoon in Spy Family, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to disappoint you, buddy. You see this right here? We, we don't do that here. The show actually deciding to continue the overarching narrative is usually just icing on the cake from what I already like about how the show presents itself. They could literally have an entire episode about grocery shopping, and I promise you the entire world will be tuned in like. The loaves of the French bread here in the bakery, these used to be a dollar each, they're a dollar 47 each, but I mean. So when it actually does decide to be linear in its storytelling and actually decides to be serious, it usually goes pretty hard. Room service is here. I didn't order it. Bad ass. I think I can speak for myself and a lot of people that I am perfectly fine with the goofy ass episodic nature of Spy Family. Simply because I just enjoy seeing these characters do stuff. Yeah, I know, it's not a good excuse for talking about this show's lack of a narrative half the time. What the dog doing? But that's only because I really don't take this show seriously. Spy Family is one of the first anime that I just see as a cartoon and nothing else. When the overarching story comes back around and slaps you in the face like Bow! Yeah, we didn't forget, nigga. We was always here. We was always here. We was always coming back. It justifies all of the slow, sometimes dumb as fuck character moments we get from the cast. And I love how I say that this show reminds me of a Saturday morning cartoon, but then the first scene of season two is literally your killing people with clear, blunt head wounds and blood. Blood? Blood. And then the whole episode after is just your walking around in a shitty mood because she got shot in the... But other than that, to anyone who doesn't think this show is just silly kid cartoon fun time, please be fucking for real. I'll add a bit of to really turn it up. They'll be scraping her off what's left of the ceiling.
like what four year old telepath or no telepath is doing all of the things that Anya does bruh anyone who watches and enjoys this show by now should completely be sold on the tone the offer is going for because me me and the team over here us over here we are a hundred and ten percent in in episode one Anya threatens a man with a toy gun after blowing him up with a peanut bomb we are in cartoon land. Stop it. Spy Family is one of the only shows I can put to memory that has serialized storytelling but conveys it mostly through an episodic format. The last show that I can literally put to memory that does the same exact thing is Avatar. But the first half of the season itself is literally just more Spy Family antics, more goofs, more shenanigans. Everything will be fine as long as Second Son grabs Mr. Joker next. Now choose. Uh, uh. <laughs> Could she be more obvious? As we should expect by now, but I'll be honest, everything before the major arc in this season The best episode of the first half of the season, which is just episodes 1 through 4 by the way, and it pains me to say this, but god damn it, it's a fucking Yuri episode. <laughs> Halfway through, I did not expect Yuri of all people, a character I despised in season 1, and don't get me wrong, my original feelings for this man are still strong. I never found you funny, I never found you entertaining, I never found you smart, I just found you annoying. It's just that in episode 3, He's basically becomes the main character for a minute and it becomes this espionage secret police mission with him spying and interloping in on this criminal and the tone throughout the entire episode stays serious. They played it straight and I was bamboozled. Let us stray, run amok, and flat out deceive. You see how I mean when I say they can slap you over the head with that shit sometimes? The episode sort of becomes sad by the end of it too. It's kind of cool, y'all, I'm not gonna lie. God damn it. I still don't like you. Franklin Perkin. I believe you're the one who wrote this, aren't you? Your family doesn't need to see you at such a pathetic moment. Don't get it twisted. The man who fought against the government? Or their loyal lapdog? I wonder who'd be called pathetic. Because the next episode, I'm reminded immediately why this character sucks ass. Episodes like this make me excited about what to expect from the future of this show. Because this episode showed me when the offer isn't making Yuri be a weirdo, he can actually almost carry a storyline. Which makes me anticipate the moment all the skeletons come out of the closet and he finds out who Lloyd really is. Because come on, we all know it's gonna happen. The bad stuff about this half of the season though is that the stuff not involving the Forger family isn't as interesting as I think the author wanted it to be. There are whole episodes sometimes where the family are not the main characters. And I'm gonna be real, I don't know how much this supporting cast really carries the load but that's just a small part of the season because in the grand scheme of it none of this boring stuff will be remembered because dead in the middle of the season is where we get some good fucking food No notes? No notes. No notes! No notes! No notes! No notes! No notes! It's perfect. Now I know I said we were here for the shenanigans. I'm still here for the shenanigan episodes. But the main thing I asked for in my previous video on this show finally happened. And it makes me so happy. Your Forger finally gets to do stuff. Oh! Tiger! This season is definitely the your season. Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. If season one was mostly about Anya and Lloyd and getting acclimated into this family style and world, season two is where we expand on a character I think most people can agree didn't get shit to work with in season one, really. 
Sorry. The season immediately starts with Lloyd asking you on a date, which is funny to me because considering how tactical Lloyd is, why did he not think that he needed to keep up appearances with his wife? And you know actually have a relationship with her outside of this three bedroom apartment and like i said about your in my original video it makes sense that she never been on a date before since it seems growing up she never really had much of a social life because of her mom passing and her having to take care of her little brother by killing people for money considering how perceptive lloyd is i do like him not being able to spot the simplest things when it comes to people especially your your is an unpredictable semi aloof semi malicious semi motherly tornado and lloyd just doesn't know how to operate sometimes around her Shall we? Last night, I formulated 862 date plans I'm sure she'll enjoy. Success is all but guaranteed. I'd much prefer if we walked around instead. What? What's happening? Why is she still angry? 794 plans gone in an instant. First time. Because despite going on a million dates as an undercover spy, he cannot predict what goes inside this woman's head. And it's to the point that I'm like, bro, you're this perceptive. Why wouldn't you just deduce that it's just the time of the month for her or something? I don't know. It's just a, it's just a dumb fucking kids show. But like I said, this is the your forger season. She gets most of the screen time, a majority of the spotlight. The main arc of the season is about your. In season one, we got to see Lloyd do all this spy bullshit, but we never got any assassination missions for your. And I thought that was weird. But thankfully, all our prayers were answered for season. To. Half the season is dedicated to yours mission and she kind of gets her ass beat here. I'm not even gonna lie in more ways than one this season <laughs> <laughs> we get some more characterization for your as well this season we get to meet her handler and the official name to the organization that assigns her her missions it's interesting to think that your this whole time thinks she's helping the country with her assassination work i was worried that family life may have softened your abilities but that's clearly not the case. I'm quite confident you'll be able to serve our next customer. Good! I'm ready to lay evildoers to rest whenever you need me. <laughs> that's reassuring. Yeah, he's tweaked. Because I have my own image of how this show will play out down the line, and I'm honestly just waiting to see if we'll get there. So that fact opening up really surprised me. I love that in my first video for this show, I got all deep and psychological into yours character, and then looking back on it a little bit after I uploaded it, I felt like I went a little harder than necessary since this show is just a goofy slapstick half the time. Your as a person, her motives and ambitions were kind of purposeless, I imagine. Because if you think about it, why does your like being a hired hit woman? I don't know. She never talks about it. We barely even see her do it. Does she even care that she kills people for money, then comes home like nothing happened? Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. Like, Yor was living the life of a stereotype before the Forger family, working a job where her co workers talk shit about her for being single. But how could she when, for the longest time, finding a partner and starting a family was never on her mind? I know, I know. I might be going a little bit hard on the psychoanalyzation, but you know, let me let me cook a little bit. Let me cook. I just hate the stigma on men and women that feel purposeless or directionless in their career means that they don't have a purpose at all. Like everybody needs to be an actor or a musician or a business owner and that being a full-time mother and parent can be just as gratifying because it clearly is for her and that's what she represents for me. So I guess as of right now, the reason they probably probably barely show your being an actual assassin is probably because she doesn't take many jobs anymore since she's a wife with a kid now to take care of at home she never had a life partner before to lean on for money so she doesn't have to go out and commit literal murders tell me you're not still leaving your dirty socks out come on sis you know i'm not a kid anymore right yeah i suppose not it's not fair for me to depend on you for the rest of my life. At least not as much. I guess that means Yuri is all grown up now. Of course he is. He has a proper job and can make a living all on his own. 
He doesn't need my help like he used to. Honestly, I don't know why I need to keep working as an assassin anymore. Let him cook. I'm gonna let him. I'm gonna yep. let him. I am. I never expected the offer to actually make her think about the shit that she actually did. And seeing the offer follow through with it actually blew my mind. Which makes it kind of sad because it just shows that I didn't really have much respect for the overarching narrative of this story. For half the time this season, Yor is actually contemplating on the thought of quitting being the hired hitwoman and just focusing on being a full-time mom for Anya. And that actually made me so happy. I fucking knew it. Don't tell me I don't know why I be talking about in these videos, bro. <laughs> Y'all really can't tell me shit now. If Yor became an assassin to make money for her and her brother, then hear me out. Minimize sex work, train more women to become super sexy, super soldier assassins. I feel like if I don't get to do this, I, I, I feel like that's it. Like I might, I might, uh, like I, I might die. I love that the escort mission Yor is assigned to on her cruise, the way the offer presents it, it's as if she's never had these restrictions before. That hesitation I felt earlier. Did that happen simply because I was scared of getting hurt? If I get so badly injured that I can't explain it to my family, that could mean life with them would be over for good. I need to ask myself, why am I even doing this? Because most of the scenes we see of Yor killing people, she usually just does the job and then bounces. Everybody's already spaghetti on the floor. But in this arc, this puts her in a situation where she has to avoid being seen by her family, restrain herself from her base instincts to just murder somebody in a fight. And it was all really fucking cool. Bruh, imagine how traumatized Anya would actually be if she saw her mom actually behead someone right in front of her. <laughs> I didn't really like the coincidence that brought the family together onto the boat. It's like, yeah, I get it. You want your main characters on the same boat together so shenanigans can go down. That is the third time I've said that word. As presently constructed, Spy Family can be a really good show on its own as a comedy, but you can't tell me the premise of this show wouldn't still kill if it was just a drama. Kinda on a Mr. and Mrs. Smith type of style, but just with an actual family. Because when Spy Family wants to be, this shit can get active. <laughs> I'll give you two seconds to answer, or your leg gets broken next. Did Harpoon hire you? This is a show that can have an episode about kids arguing over macaroons, and then the next episode will be murdering people on a cruise ship while discarding bodies in the ocean to never be seen again. The dichotomy of the tones of this show is strange, but it works. It works because the author wants us to still see the things through Anya's childlike POV, as well as the bleak and bloody world of the adults. We That's why the openings are the way that they are. And you would think Anya and Lloyd just being a B story in the majority of this season would take away from their development, but to be honest, their moments are some of my favorite of the season. He got that shit on though. Twilight the <laughs> learning how to enjoy a vacation and downtime as well as actual family bonding was fun to see. As well as Lloyd trying to help Anya have a good time while Anya is trying to help Yor but keeps getting sidetracked because she's four and has ADHD. Which in turn gives Lloyd anxiety because he thinks he's doing a bad job. And then Anya cheers him up making sure that he knows that he is doing a good job. I just like that shit. It's just comfy. And in the end of it all, this arc has such a satisfying conclusion to the things that Yor has been juggling in her mind throughout the entire mission. By the end of her mission, she finds a new resolve to continue being a hired killer. Which makes sense to me as a viewer, because you never really wanted your to stop being assassin. It's the entire draw of the show. I just really wanted her to question her own morality 
since as presented, yours is not a psychopath. <laughs> it doesn't seem like she enjoys this work. Her assassin work is kind of like a mode she enters when she knows she's gotta do some crazy shit. Some of the stuff she does is just straight buffoonery. What an amazing story arc for this show. I was genuinely surprised by how entertaining it was for me. It's definitely the best arc of the show so far, but considering the show is already so episodic, I don't even know what I would even call any arc in season 1. If this entire storyline this season didn't convince me why I liked this show in the first place, then this scene probably did it for me. Oh, I've been going without sleep this whole trip. No wonder I'm exhausted. Uh, your? Hello? Papa, I'm getting sleepy too. Carry me. Huh? <sighs> oh my. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And after the boat, we kind of just go back to normal hijinks as usual, you know? Just more character building stuff until the offer decides to go back to the juicy shit. And the stuff we do get for character building isn't bad. Except for the Becky stuff. Every Becky episode is bad. We can cut all those from the show, please. The Bond and Lloyd solo adventure was fun simply because Lloyd is displaying so many emotions that we never get to see when he's around someone actually human, which just leaves me thinking. I, I, I literally don't know what to expect from this movie. Cloverworks is still putting their gussy into the show. It still looks amazing. The opening and endings are some of the most stylized theme songs from the year. There's not much to complain about here. Spy Family good. Less horny Becky antics, those were trash. Oh, I'm sorry. Just making some small talk. I really wasn't trying to pry. Didn't think a child would notice, but I may have overstepped. <gasps> so you were just playing games with my heart? And most definitely more your missions. Because I never would have guessed seeing her do a season long mission would be so fun. Season 1 of Spy Family was very Anya focused with her school antics and this season was definitely catering more to your, her life, her backstory, what she does. So I expect season 3 to give more depth to Lloyd as well because we still really don't know shit about bro. And I'm not really sure what to give this season. I, I didn't rate my Jujutsu Kaisen video cause, cause I, I fucking forgot. Uh, Spy Family season 2, 8 out of 10? 7 out of 10? 8 out of 10? Is that too high? Yeah, I don't care. This is my channel. I like this show. 8 out of 10. Dare you tell me this was over? There ain't no use talking it over. Why can't you try to tell me sooner?